Okay. Hello, everyone. Okay. Super. Um, hi, hello, everyone, and very welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, this evening. And well, as you probably know, this is the fourth presentation of uh, Brave Infraction program. Brave Infraction is uh, the reaction of biofriction projects to the situation with the COVID-19 um, pandemic and is the result of the, some postponed activities and the need to, to, to have a place to discuss in a critical way um, the current situation and some possible scenarios. So we've been working with uh, four working groups and today we have the fourth presentation. As you know, um, Red Friction, as I said, is, is being organized by Biofriction as a project and Biofriction uh, is funded by the Creative Europe program and is being developed together uh, by BioR Society in Finland, uh, Kersnikova Institute in Slovenia, Cultivamos Cultura in Portugal and Angar in Barcelona, Catalonia. And today uh, we have the fourth presentation and this presentation is uh, the group of aerosol notes and the participants are Spela Petrik, uh, Adriana Knauf, uh, Agnieszka Bolosko, Ingrid Branken, and Leslie Garcia. I'm sorry for, for <laughs> the pronunciation, but thank you so much for, for uh, joining us today here. And uh, thanks so much. And we are waiting for your presentation. Thanks. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, what we have prepared for you tonight is um, a notebook, an open-ended notebook of our time together. Uh, we want to share with you the different entangled topics that we have explored and the different media and tools through which we have been exploring this and with which we have been playing around. Um, so it will be a ride of around 50 minutes. Um, there will be participatory parts, so you're very much invited uh, to take part in those um, and we will notify you, of course, when these moments happen. And uh, it's best to have headphones in uh, or to use headphones uh, because we'll be using some sound and it's best experienced that way. Voila. Then uh, I leave it to Anishka to open this evening. How to live in the singularity of time made by the virus? We, the aerosol travelers, declare the virus that made all to collapse into singularity of the infinite disembodiment to pass into the demonological bodies of multiplicity. We, the multiple travelers, take the task to restore the contamination of the multiplicity of time, the mutability and pollination of bodies, and generate time space across the planets. To consider a virus to be a demon might, for a respectable rational mind, be part of magical thinking awkwardly naive and inappropriate in academically professional surroundings. And yet, under the surface of numbers, graphs, analysis and prediction of corona spread, the word that is used to describe contemporary phenomena is no other as this one, pandemonium. To understand the curious curiosity of the use of that word, it is imperative to look at its etymology. According to Oxford English Dictionary, pandemonium from ancient Greek denotes forming terms relating to the whole of the universe or mankind, or denoting that the second element exists or operates at the universal level. A demon means any evil spirit, 
a malevolent supernatural being, a devil. Pandemonium denotes thus the abode of all demons, hell, the infernal region, a place represented by million in paradise lost as the capital of hell, containing the council chamber of the evil spirits. It can also mean a center of vice or wickedness, a hunt of evil, a place or state of utter confusion and uproar, a noisy, disorderly place. Pandemic is thus a state of the lack of control, a state of confusion and chaos, because what governs the world is not a centralist system of power, but unstoppable relationality and contamination of an entity that is neither one nor many. If a virus like a demon exposed our fear of multiplicity, noise and contamination, making us cluster behind flickering screens of universal time, a way to not only live, but thrive, is through and not against demons. To quote the loose, demons are different from gods because gods have fixed attributes, properties and functions, territories and codes. They have to do with rails, boundaries and surveys. What demons do is jump across intervals and from one interval to another. We are taught to forget about demons and to be scared of ghosts. We disbelittle the demons as a medieval fantasy and part of magical thinking and tame the ghosts by incorporating them into the movie entertainment. But here lies the profound ontological schism that penetrates our bodies each time you open your mouth and speak in language about the difference that is a demonological change without falling into the ghost of identity. Demons don't give a damn about morality. Demons don't care about the time, as they make time, collapsing all into new transformation. They are beyond good and evil, but they generate your good and evil actions. Demons cannot be identified, as in the moment of capture they are already something else by becoming. Demonology is not just of past but of beyond the time-space, because they are the time-space. Demons are the relationality of movements of elements. Now, close your eyes that habitually were captured by gods in the ocular-centric propaganda. Close them and surrender your multiple selves to demonological rhythm of change. This is the story of the 1518 plague of Strasbourg. 15th century, Strasbourg flourishes as a major agricultural market and transportation center However, the majority of the people are obligated to return their profits to the employer or to the church. 1492. For the, a third consecutive year, abnormal climate change destroys crops. Famine strikes. New taxes are issued. Those unable to pay the church's tariffs are threatened with excommunication. 1493, several young men establish the Bunchu, a clandestine association of peasants that plot against the clergy and landlords who pressure them to cultivate the lands under severe conditions. One of their own betrays them and the majority are beheaded or hung for high treason. 1494, 
1495, Europe is introduced to syphilis. Preachers view syphilis as a punishment for the lusts of the flesh. 1496, the bubonic plague appears 20 miles south of Strasbourg. 1502, Bunchu again revolts against the clergy and landlords to restore the rights of the common citizen. The movement is foiled by a member within the group and participants are executed. 1503, Bishop Albrecht concludes that Strasbourg is a battleground between the Lord's and the Satan's forces. However, his calls for change fall on deaf ears amongst the clergy who refuse to leave, to leave their concubines behind when the bishop himself had intimate affairs with prostitutes and fathered bastard children. 1517, smallpox sweeps through Strasbourg. The few hospitals the city has are overcrowded and can't care for those infected. 1517, the disease called English sweat reaches Strasbourg. The symptoms of acute anxiety are followed by extremely violent shivers and fatigue. Sweat begins to pour out of the victim's body in large amounts and death follows soon after. The oppression of the poor continues. The church raises the peasant debt. The Bunchu movement strikes yet again, murdering the magistrates and civic leaders. However, as before, the movement is betrayed by a fellow conspirator and the rebels are promptly executed. The dream of a utopian peasant society vanishes. By 1518, misery within the peasantry reaches an all-time high. A week before the festival of Mary Magdalene, Frau Trofia began awkwardly dancing without reason. Many rumored her to be upset with her husband and that she danced in public to shame him. But even after the husband's pleas, Frau Trofea continued dancing vigorously. A curious crowd surrounded her, and they were shocked by her stamina. As evening set, she collapsed into a state of sleep. However, Frau Trofea began her dance early the next morning with renewed energy and continued doing so for six long days. She danced despite horrendous bruising, bloody sores and lacerations on her feet. Those who witnessed the occurrence said she was possessed by the devil or some other evil spirits. She danced in a deep state of trance brought forth by the extreme levels of stress, anxiety and pressures. The trance allowed Frau Trofea to ignore the pain beyond her conscious awareness. Eventually, an estimated 400 citizens joined her in the streets of Strasbourg, exhibiting the same symptoms. They attained extremely high levels of endurance. And so, even the weak were viewed as strong due to this phenomenon. First glance, it all seems serene. City folk swaying their hips and waving their fans in a local park in Beijing. Then they crank up the music. They're better known as the dancing grannies, and there are 100 million in China kicking up their heels from the early hours to the end of the day. Last used to be hard. We had to be careful with every penny. But now we don't have to. We live the way that makes us feel happy. But there's a problem. The music is loud enough to blow out an air trumpet, and it's driving the neighbors crazy. We start dancing really early in the morning, and it's just too many people. Some 
residents are running. Others are in open revolt. Making the headlines this summer, stories of intergenerational warfare, countrywide. And Joe City, homeowners got together to buy their own sound system, from which they broadcast this. It doesn't sound very good, but that's the it's not to sing every day at 2pm, and their voices sound horrible, so we decided to use our noise to fight against their noise. When Joe's dancing, Manny's more unimpressed, accusing local residents of acting like They just want to fight us, they don't want us to be here to dance and sing. Puzzled, the Council of Strasbourg turned to the leading physicians of the time for advice on the matter. They looked into the stars and planets for an explanation, but then resorted to a contemporary medical reasoning for the cause of the dancing plague. They stated, dance is a natural disease which comes from overheated blood. In fact, the physicians encouraged the afflicted to continue dancing so that it may pass. The city created several stage platforms in which those affected could continue their dance accompanied by music. This, however, did not help any of them. Finally, a pilgrimage to the town of Severne was suggested. This journey gave Strasbourg a glimmer of hope as the medieval church in Saverne aided many of those affected because the ritual at the church in Saverne spoke specifically and directly to the peasants, replacing the past years of neglect and horrendous experiences with months of attention from the religious and civic sectors of the city. And such is the story of how the Strasbourg dancing plague of 1518 achieved care for the exploited classes. Imagine a universe about time. The word time is in the ever-present background on which existence is played out. How might you live? How might you relate to the plants you take care of? How might you relate to your own disillusion? Your supposed beginning? Your connection to the actions of your mother? Your relationship to the flux of the sun? Does it matter if SARS-CoV-2 came first or HIV? when death still feels final in a universe without time. Does it matter if you danced at the party in the summer of 2006? Or did a glitter makeup tutorial in May 2020 when time does not exist? Does it matter that we believe that July comes after June, comes after May, comes after April, comes after March, comes after February, comes after January in the year 2020 when time does not exist? Physicists have endeavored for decades to unify theories of gravity and quantum mechanics. Whether this quest for unification is reasonable or not, let's ignore that for now. But at the quantum level, in the theories of what is called loop quantum gravity, time as we know it does not exist. It is the emergent property of the loops of space-time to the in and out of existence creating what physicists call spin phones. There is no directionality to time. There is no narrow. Past, present, future. These are just convenient fictions for us. What we term the future can exert its influence on what we term the present, and likewise the past can change the present, and the present can modify the past. Deleuze wrote a bit about this, not exactly like this, of course, but in enough resonance with the physics understanding to be uncanny. Carlos Rivelli, one of the main people behind loop quantum gravity, has written, We must not think of time 
as if it were a great cosmic clock that marks the life of the universe. We have known for more than a century that we must think of time instead as a localized phenomenon. Every object in the universe has its own time running, a pace determined by the local gravitational field. What does it mean, then, to say that time does not exist? First, the absence of the variable time from the fundamental equations of physics does not imply at all that everything is immobile and that change cannot happen. On the contrary, it means that change is ubiquitous. At the extremely small scale of the quantum of space, the dance of nature does not develop to the rhythm kept by the baton of a single orchestral conductor. Every process dances independently with its neighbors, following its own rhythm. The passing of time is intrinsic to the world. It is born of the world itself, out of the relations between quantum events, which are the world itself, and which themselves generate their own time. Thus saith Rebelli. If time does not exist, perhaps we can conjure our world differently. We don't have to think of the past as a precedent to be followed. Perhaps we can be not so tied to old ways of thinking, old ways of making, old ways of doing, and instead create new ways of existing in our bodies, new ways of manifesting possibilities for modulating ourselves into something entirely other. Perhaps we can think about this as a quantum queerness. Recently, the drag queen Omro Agati has spoken about the relationships between quantum mechanics and his queer identity, the ways that both can be indeterminate, the flitting in and out of existence of small particles of being, the flux of transitioning from one way of orienting yourself to the world with another. And queers, and the Zeno ones too, know that the plague of the moment is also the plague of our past, the virus that destroyed tens of millions of lives, that continues to destroy lives as that plague intertwines with this plague. The queers and Zenos know also the power of living our lives as a big fuck you to the people who see the future as only the extension of their recent past. So that's why we make ourselves up for battle and partying. We conjure that which is hidden with these words. Adorn yourself with the colors of the universe. Color your eyes for travel without time. Make sure they link up with the times you want to create. Realize that the latent vectors of the universe hide the ghosts. The ghosts of the future that the majority lets happen, but also the ghosts of the future that we can create. The ghosts of the past that still haunt us and that we have not made amends to. Project to demonize. Once made material, get to know your nearest neighbor demon, knowing that it might be behind you, beside you, within you. In the words of the glitter poet C.A. Conrad in his Corona Days 18, which were written in the early days of the lockdown, if we are to dream anything during this plague, let us please consider the things we do not want to return to normal.
organization is the coordination of events to operate a system in unison. Systems that operate without parts in synchrony are said to be sync, and those are not are called asynchronous. Can synchronization can occur between systems around the world through satellite navigation? Signals depend on the oscillatory features of Celsius atoms that are capable to radiate light at a frequency of 192 million 617 cycles per second. We truly live in times of atomic oscillation refers at a distance about the equilibrium position and repeat itself over and over for a period of time. For example, the it behaves like a gigantic electrical circuit. This electromagnetic field oscillates at a frequency of 7.83 hertz. The so-called human resonance, named after physicist Dr. Winfried Otto Schumann, who predicted mathematically this institute. According to Dr. Konstantin Korotov, electronic analysis study, the human body is capable of an energy that is in a range in between 380 and 750 nanometers wavelength. The electrophotography has found seven main points of emission of this energy located in the following glands. Gonads, pancreas, thymus, thyroid, pituitary meal. This source energy coincides with the points known as chakras. Within the use of Hinduism, Theosophism, mysticism, and in Maya, it's called Kuru. Chakra means wheel in Sanskrit, and it was the Vedas who used this term to refer to the energy of the human body. These findings were possible by the use of electrography, a technique for the and monitoring of the informal state of human energy that uses computerized gas visualization as the main technique. It has been possible to group each of these emissions and the of the glands as sources of radiant energy into wavelengths and hertz ranges. I worked on an application program in pure data, which seeks to synchronize each of these points using the resonance principle. The patch is made up of seven oscillators, each of in hertz and wavelength. It is a well known only affect on an emotional level, but they also have the ability to modify of matter. I'd like to invite you to experience witness. For this act, it's important to use headphones or audio monitors. Try to sit yourself in a comfortable position and prepare to oscillate as a synchronous system altogether. Let's begin.
Lady in her rhythm quarter. The female gland, conarium, or epiphytic cerebri, is a small endocrine gland in the brain of most vertebrates. The pineal gland produces melatonin and serotonin derived hormones, which modulate the sleep pattern in both circadian and seasonal cycles. It's an endocrine gland about the size of a pig and a weight of 0.5 grams in human. Tritari is in control of growth, blood pressure, energy management, and functions of the sex organ, thyroid gland, and metabolism. Produces a hormone called tyroxine, also called T4. Thyroid hormones act through the body, influencing metabolism, growth, and development. The nerves of the automatic nervous tissues control. They intervene the hair, adrenaline, medulla, vascular small muscle, which controls cardiac rate and output. Pancreas. Has both an endocrine and a digestive endocrine functions. It regulates the blood sugar levels, the hormone insulin, glucagon, somatactin, and the pancreatic. Thank you. 
oscillate in between 179 and 243 hertz. It's a mixed gland that produces the gametes, the sex cells and sex hormones of any organ. Adrenal glands, no It oscillates in between 158 and 174 hertz. The adrenal glands, also known as suprarenal glands, are endocrine glands that produce a variety of hormones, including adrenaline and the steroid. Now, dance together. to imagine and perceive yourself in sync with your own oscillations, with the others, with the planet. Consider this as a fine tuning. As a musician tunes their instrument, we must tune our own bodies. In computer science, synchronization refers of two distinct but related concepts, synchronization of processes and synchronization of data. Process synchronization refers to the idea that multiple processes are to join up or handshake at a certain point in order to reach an agreement or commitment to certain data synchronization refers to the idea of keeping multiple copies of data in coherence with one another. Or to maintain the process synchronization primitives are commonly used to implement data synchronization. For this exercise, the analogy of the handshake, so we can reach a point of agreement to synchronize ourselves with the ability to perceive and be part of the series of changes the plan is overcoming. For this, we are using physical programming techniques based on the idea of the mudra. Mudra means seal, mark, or gesture. And we're using these gestures to create our handshake. Please follow the gestures of my hands while you repeat with me. We agree that all that we are perceiving is occurring in a multidimensional level. We agree to work on the creation of the proper conditions for us humans to create synchronicity.
with the phenomena, matter, and otherness, they inhabitate this planet with us. We agree to entangle in the complex and sophisticated form of intelligence that is intuition. We agree to gather all our information and knowledge to create an awareness. We agree that all that we are perceiving is occurring in a multidimensional level. We agree to work on the creation of the proper conditions for us humans to create synchronicity with the phenomena, matter, and otherness they inhabitate this planet with us. Let's do an exercise in light oscillators. Synchronicity of multiple interacting dynamical systems can occur when the systems are autonomous oscillators. For instance, integrated and fire oscillators with either two-way symmetric or one-way coupling can synchronize when the straight of the coupling in frequency units then the difference among the free running natural oscillators frequency. Poncare phase oscillators are model systems that can interact and partially synchronize within random or regular networks. Now, rest yourself in your newly tuned state. February 2014, first cases of Pestis africana sum, African swine fever, registered in Poland. January 2019, the mass scale reduction of wild pig population due to cross-contamination of SAF on farm animals. July 2019, a 14-kilometer section of express road open connecting the south with east of Olsztyn in Poland. January 2020, first cases of coronavirus registered in France. March 2020, closing of all the territorial borders in Poland due to quarantine. May 2020, Wild pigs conquer the city of Olsztyn. I have seen her passing by, my usual spot where we find some snack to bite after dinner. It was just a glimpse. I remember her well as not often my eyes met with them in a mutual curiosity. Sometimes I doubt if she ever existed. Maybe it was just my imagination. Maybe what is left is just my memory of comfortably tensed coexistence with the stranger. I wonder if she is still alive. Whether she survived. Now, after the great virus through which many of us were killed and rumor was that we will be wiped out completely, it seems that centuries has passed since I saw her. The traces of who we were seem so fragile, almost irrelevant now. Some of us managed to run to the small forest, in the lands just before they made a mechanic river of many streams impossible to control and keep up with. I escaped with Zosha. She didn't want to leave our nest that is filled with all our memories and stuff that kept who we were. Sophia is proud and stubborn. But I love her. She is my secret escape to comfort of security, and despite her seeming detachment from the materiality of life, she is gentle, and she guides you just by her tingled murmur. So here we are. There is thousands of us. Day after day, we move further into stones. The smell is too good not to. I read somewhere that if you melt with others and you do not say a word, you become as them. So if 
It felt as a perfect weapon of survival at the time. It went according to 11 principles, so I memorized them into a story that I tell to youngsters now. Stories are the powerful tool for keeping memories, but also for hiding those unwanted and creating those desired. I tell them as a song for all to sing before their bedtime, to make it part of their daily rhythm. They may scream at us, chase us, or worship us, but we are beyond their moral judgment. We are all different, just like they have different furs. We are feeding on them each time they bite our flesh. We have different powers, but we all have roles to play. We can hide, transform and mutate, and we live among the many others. We can kill their gods and bring justice to earth, but we can also destroy and plunder. We are powerful, but never seeking the attention for our deeds. We can make you sing in excitement, revealing our wisdom that tells the story now. Please sing with us before we go silent. So we learn how to keep quiet in hope to be accepted as them. We murmur our songs before we go to sleep to keep remembering the strategies of survival. But with each day, our silence and mutation into one started to give a result we didn't anticipate. We became silent and they do not see us. We stop talking and they do not know that we even exist. At least these were our thoughts. They pass by us, sometimes stop in front of us, but seem to look just through without a sign of recognition. At first, I was afraid for Zosia, as she seemed too detached to be careful. She was keeping on reciting all the maps of how to went back home, even though we all knew all the roads are long gone. By that time, there were already hundreds of us. Among them, we merged with the stones. Sometimes I see the curious looks as if it was looking straight into my soul that I can feel through the shivers under my skin deep down building my every cell. Sometimes I think they are like us, also hoping not to be seen for who they are not. And sometimes that we are just lost in this game of hide and seek and we just buying time before we cease to feel. One afternoon, when we had a nap, I heard her voice in my dream, which is strange as I have never heard how she sounds. Her eyes were big and sharp, voice high, almost irritating, and yet welcoming. I imagine she knows how it feels like being finite, when all can change and mutate, but you are penalized when you do. In dreams, I can travel backwards against all logic and laws to that moment when I saw her. My belly was empty and I could feel how hers was too. Is she multiple? Can she resist the destiny? I wonder how great would it be not to be afraid to be seen, to be possible to mutate with them, to feast as multiple among them. But I know it's a dream. I know we just bind time by making us appear as one and they will soon notice us because the speed of our change that conditions us is accelerating. But even though I think it's a dream, I surely cannot have doubts that I could see her. So maybe it's a travel to the future. I remember a scientist preaching that At the precise moment when heat is produced, the process is irreversible. The past differs from the future. It is always a heat, and only the heat that distinguishes the past from the future. And it makes me realize that each time I see her, I wake up with sweat under my pits and neck. At first, I didn't make much of it, but these dream sweats would indicate that the heat was released from my body with unusual speed, as during the daytime my skin is dry and cold as a sandstone. Is that possible? Did I travel to the future to see her? During one of these travels, instead of looking away, 
I kept on staring at her so that I could tell her my story and my voice was merging with hers and my eyes started to see what she is seeing and we became together the constellation of changing bodies, neither one nor many. I became with her a little and she became with me a little and our bodies became a little smoother and a little stronger and a little more porous and a little more hairy and a little more more and So if our bodies are constantly creating diversity of times on the cellular level, while simultaneously traveling through time, experiencing it as a whole, a linear narrative, then we can maybe experience the true diversity of these times in the dream body that is no longer bound to the illusion of materiality as a whole. In different mystic traditions, the dream body is entered in order to repair past harms and to receive prophecy. So let's sink into our dream bodies and activate them as antennae, becoming a demon, receiving information from the body. So what I would like to share with all of you uh, now is um, an exercise from a Kabbalistic dreaming practice uh, that I've been doing for many years. And it is important um, to relax and to receive the images rather than to force your mind to see something. Because in this practice, um, the belief is that the way the body is communicating its observations is through imagery. So let's do this today together. Uh, sit up straight with your arms and legs uncrossed. If you're sitting in lotus, that's fine. And close your eyes. And just breathe and follow your breath. Let your breath find its own rhythm. Don't force anything. Knowing that when the breath finds its own rhythm, everything that's not in place in the body will return to be in place. And as you breathe, slowly sink into your throat. Feel how the breath finds its place in your throat. And as you breathe, sink into your chest, feeling how the breath fills and expands the chest, how it hugs your heart, your stomach, And as you breathe, sink even deeper into the belly, into the hips, and now see how in your belly there is a ball of clear white blue light that starts to form. And see how this ball of light starts to expand. And how the light reaches into your legs, all the way to your toes. See how this bright white blue light fills your chest, your neck, 
your arms. White, blue light. And now experience how every cell in your body is completely alive. And breathe out and see the number three. Now breathe out and see the number two. Now breathe out and see the number one, tall, clear, and very bright. Now see, feel, and know how every cell in your body is creating time. What do you see? Where do you feel it? Now breathe out and look at the directions in which time is moving. Now breathe out and know how you can travel through time. And when you see, feel, and know, you can open your eyes. So if our body is an antenna of energy, creating itself from noise, creating time, then what do we want to listen to from the past? What do we want to lure towards us? from the future? What are we mixing into an idea of now? What do we sprinkle around us as creation, setting in motion entangled paths? And how do we jump into a different timeline? Now that we know the questions, we can ask for the answers. So what do we want to listen to from the past? Hmm. The Three of Cups is a, a really beautiful and joyful card. And actually, I thought about it before our... Um, uh, gathering tonight that this meeting has felt very much like the Three of Cups. Um, in the Three of Cups, we see uh, three figures, female-looking figures, um, toasting each other in a whirling dance, a circle dance. And the cup is uh, uh, seen as the... Uh, the water, holding the waters of the self, holding the emotions, the intuitions. And so when we can bring our emotions, our intuitions, our whole selves to the table and celebrate that in each other and support each other in friendship, in those, uh, uh, in those capacities, then we can really um, reach great creativity and, um, uh, and pleasure. So what we take with us from the past are these moments where we feel lifted up by each other, where we feel like we can wholly come together and where we can celebrate um, who we are together.
Mm, what do we want to learn towards us from the future? Hmm. The Five of Pentacles is an interesting card <laughs> when it comes to what we want to learn towards us from the future. The Pentacles are material possessions and in this card we see two figures who are walking through the snow who are outside of this church-like uh, uh, light and warmth emitting uh, space building. And often it is seen as a card talking about hardship or talking about financial difficulty. But I um, always find it so fascinating in this card that those figures um, are not going into this building. They're not actually um, seduced maybe by the splendor. Um, and for me, this is also a card of resistance, uh, a card of resistance uh, to the institution that might give help, but that will give help on their own terms, on a paternalizing, uh, from a paternalizing kind of point of view. So what we want to learn from the future might be um, a resistance for the easy solutions even though we are in hardship. What are we mixing into the idea of now? The moon? We see these animals, a dog, like coyote-like animal, um, this lobster. And the moon speaks of um, anxieties, depression, fear. It speaks of these hidden fears that we don't want to address. But often it is um, unneeded or irrational fears. And the moon also reminds us that um, to connect to our inner self doesn't only mean uh, to connect to uh, the, the beautiful things, but means to address these fears. We can only um, move forward and transform if we address our fears, our anxieties, and, um, and do the work of, of transforming those, of... Uh, looking them in the eye. So if the moon is mixed into the now, then I think it is pressuring us to use this strength of joyful celebration and use this strength of resistance to not give in to irrational fears and keep moving towards a transformation that is inevitable. And the more we can uh, address our anxieties, the less they will be part of our future. Um, what are we sprinkling around us as creation? <laughs> the King of Pentacles. Pentacles are considered uh, the pursuit of material possessions. And we see here the king, the ruler of the pentacles, the ruler of um, the material world, let's say. Uh, and we see his cloak adorned with um, grapes, uh, which is an um, image of abundance. So what we're sprinkling around us as creation are the seeds of abundance, I would say. Uh, materials to be taken up by anyone else uh, to then transform them into their own castles. How do we jump into a different timeline?
the nine of pentacles. And um, in all the previous uh, uh, rehearsals we did for this, it was always a tower. So I was hoping for the tower. <laughs> but actually, this is even better. The tower is like sudden cataclysm as the very obvious uh, way of jumping from one time into the next. But uh, in the Nine of Pentacles, uh, the way of uh, jumping from one time it's to the next is to also sometimes surrender to pleasure, to decadence, to laziness. And maybe that's what we deserve tonight. We agree to entangle in the complex and sophisticated form of intelligence that is intuition. We agree to gather all our information and knowledge to create an awareness. We agree that all we are perceiving is occurring in a multidimensional level. We agree work on the creation of the power condition for us humans to create synchronicity with the phenomena, matter, and otherness that inhabit this planet with us. And with this, we conclude our travel and invite you all to join us at um, the Biofriction Jitsi uh, for uh, bring your own booze and chat, get together. Thank you.